Hello everyone. Welcome to Helm of Science. So in the last video of matrices, we have discussed the definition of matrix. Then we have discussed the types of matrices, rectangular matrix, square matrix, then row matrix, column matrix. And we have discussed some different types of matrices like diagonal matrix. Okay. So, so today we will start with the next type of matrix that is the scalar matrix. Okay. So it is scalar matrix. Now, what is this scalar matrix? Write it down. It is a type of diagonal matrix. Okay. So write it down. A diagonal matrix. is said to be a scalar matrix said to be a scalar matrix if its leading diagonal elements if its leading diagonal elements are all equal and non diagonal elements non diagonal elements are all zero okay non diagonal elements are all zero okay so basically square matrix or you can say the scalar matrix here the scalar matrix is what it is a diagonal matrix which is said to be a scalar matrix if it's leading diagonal i have just taught in the previous class that what is leading diagonal so if it's leading diagonal are all equal that means whatever the elements are present in the leading diagonal all are same and equal and if the non diagonal elements are all zero except the leading diagonal elements then that matrix will be called as scalar matrix or that diagonal matrix obviously will be called called a scalar matrix okay so let us represent this one that is suppose if a matrix is a with a i j here number of columns and rows are suppose number of rows is m and number of columns is n okay so it represents like this that in case of scalar matrix a i j is represented in this form that it will be zero when i is not equal to j that means non diagonal elements and if it is diagonal elements it will be a constant that will be repeating in all the elements so that is if i equal to j that means we know that the diagonal elements are a11 a22 as you can see here i and j are same okay so let us take an example suppose suppose a 2 by 2 order matrix suppose 2 0 0 2 and you can see that the diagonal elements or leading diagonal elements is 2 they both are same and equal and the non diagonal elements are zero so this is an example of scalar matrix obviously another example that you can take that is 5 0 0 0 5 0 0 0 5 now this is also a scalar matrix why right? because here you can see that the leading diagonal elements are all 5 they are equal and the non diagonal elements are all zero okay so this is an example of scalar matrix now this can be represented in another way i have taught in the last class that diagonal it is represented in diagonal 5 5 5 that means all the elements in the diagonal are 5 5 5 so we can write it in this way also okay so it is a scalar matrix or you can write it in this way also d a d i a G obviously, okay. This, okay. So this was all about the scalar matrix. Okay. Now we come to unit or identity matrix. Unit or identity matrix. Okay. So what is this all about? This is also a type of diagonal matrix. Write it down. A diagonal matrix A diagonal matrix is said to be 
an identity matrix said to be an identity matrix if its diagonal elements if its diagonal elements are equal to 1 and the non diagonal elements are or are all zero okay so you can say that identity matrix is a special type of scalar matrix where the k is one that means the k that we have written here so what is this identity matrix a diagonal matrix is said to be an identity matrix if its diagonal elements are equal to one and the non-diagonal elements are zero okay that means what if we just represent this one a i j it will be zero when i is not equal to j and one when i is equal to j okay so if i take an example suppose this identity matrix is noted by i now when we write this identity matrix in one one into one format that means number of rows is also one and number of columns is also one we denote it by i1 that is this one okay and if it is two by two that means i2 that is one zero zero one you can see here that the diagonal elements that that are present here it is one and one and the non-diagonal elements are zero okay leading diagonal elements are one and this is i3 that is three by three order matrix one zero 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 one zero 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 one okay so here you can understand that the leading diagonal elements are all one and the non-diagonal elements are zero okay so this is one into one this is two into two and this is three into three matrix okay so this was all about the identity matrix now we come to the next part that is the null matrix okay so what is this null matrix write it down a matrix is said to be null matrix is said to be null matrix or this is also called zero matrix if all the elements are zero that is a is a matrix suppose a i j where m into n number of rows and number of columns is said to be zero or null if and only if we do not it like this a i j is equal to zero for or you can say this for all i and j okay it is denoted by zero that or it, it is not zero it is null sign okay so this is o type so denoted by this one now if i take an example suppose if i write the null matrix in two by three form that means two into three format matrix that is we write it in this way and this will be zero 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 and zero 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 this is a number of rows is two and number of columns is three this is a null matrix you can see all the elements are zero here okay another example when it will be three into three that means the zero 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 here also here also so this is three into three you can see all the elements are zero so this is a null matrix okay this is a null matrix now we come to the next part 
this is the addition of matrices addition of matrices okay so what is all about just see at first we take two matrices let a and b be two matrices of same order this is what is very important here same order that is a is equal to a i j and b is equal to b i j here also a mean to n as you can see they have same order so this is also a mean to n then their sum a plus b is equal to a i j plus b i j the order will also remain same okay so what is this telling that addition of two matrices let a and b be two matrices of same order they have to be same order where a is equal to a i j where the number of rows is a and number of columns is n and also b will have the same order so a and b have same order and their sum will be denoted as a plus b is equal to a i j plus b i j this means that the element of this matrix a will be added with the corresponding elements of matrix b that means the a11 element the first row first column element will be added with the of that means the first row and first column element of matrix a will be added with only the first column and first row matrix of b okay that means a11 will be added with a b that means a11 will be added with b11 a12 will be added with b12 okay like this that means every element will be added with its corresponding elements okay and order will remain same let us take an example suppose a is a matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and b is a matrix where it is minus 1 1 1 and minus 1 now you can see both have ordered 2 into 2 they have same order that means addition is possible okay if they do not have the same order they cannot be added okay so we can write a plus b will be see here every element will be added with its corresponding here the a11 element is 1 here b11 element is minus 1 so these will be get added so 1 plus of minus 1 also he, here also minus 1 plus of 1 here minus 1 plus of 1 and here 1 plus of minus 1 okay so like this 1 plus of minus 1 Minus one plus one. Here also minus one plus one, and here plus of minus one. Order will remain same. Two into two. So you can see here this will be like this. So it is a null matrix. It is coming. Okay. So addition is this one, but every time we will not get this null matrix. It is an example only. Okay. So this is all about the addition of matrix. That means the matrices that has been to be added. that has to be added will have to be same order okay then only they can be added okay so now we come to the next part that is the properties of matrix addition the the first part here it is the commutative law okay so what this says it says that a plus b is equal to b plus c that means if i have two matrices and if we add like this that the first matrix that suppose a and second matrix is b suppose if i add the first matrix a and then i add with b and or if i add the first matrix that means b if i take the first matrix a and then we add b or we take the first matrix as b and then we add a so that is the same thing okay a plus b is equal to b plus a okay so if i take an example suppose a is equal to the example that we have taken earlier this one a is equal to 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 okay and b is equal to suppose 
minus one, one, one and minus one. So if I here find a plus b, so this will be one minus one. Okay, here minus one plus one, here minus one plus one, here also one minus one. So this will be null matrix. Now, if I want to find B plus A, okay, so B plus A will be what? It will be minus one plus one will be one minus one, one minus one and minus one plus one. So this will also give us null matrix. So you can see that A plus B is equal to B plus A. Okay, so this is the commutative law. Okay, now we come to the next property that is the associative law. You can verify this law. Okay, now what it says, it says A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. That means if I take three matrices A, B and C, now, at first we add the two matrices B plus C, and then we add this A, or else if we add A plus B first, then we add C, it is the same thing. This is the associative law, okay? You can verify this law by an example, okay? So the next property we have, it is the distributive law. Distributive law, what it is saying? So distributive law says that if I add two matrices, suppose A plus B, and then we multiply this addition of two matrices with some constant K, so it will come as like this. That means if I just take a matrix, that means if I take matrix matrices, two matrices, suppose A and B, and if I just multiply individually the matrices with a constant K, Okay, and then add, and in another step, if I just add the two matrices, and then we multiply the additional additional matrix with the scalar k, it is the same thing. So this is the uh, distributive law. Okay, you can just verify this also. The next property that we have, it is the additive identity. Additive identity. Okay, so what is this additive identity? It is says that if a matrix A, if we add the null matrix with it, it will remain the same matrix that is A, or else if we write it in this way also, null matrix plus that matrix A. Okay, so this is the additive identity. Suppose an example is taken, suppose A is a matrix one, two, three, four. Okay, and null matrix is noted by this O, which is zero, 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 zero. Okay, now if I add this one, this will be what? One plus zero, two plus zero, three plus zero, and four plus zero. Obviously here, <clears throat> I have taken the null matrix in such a way that these two orders are same. Okay, and then we have added. Okay, so this is also one plus zero means one, there are two, three, four. So it is the matrix that we have taken, A. Okay, also if I find null matrix plus A, that is zero plus one, zero plus two, zero plus three, then zero plus four, it is also same. One, two, three, four, and it is equal to A. So this is the additive identity. Okay. Now the next property it is the additive inverse. Additive inverse. Now what is this saying? Just understand. If two matrices A and B and their sum is a null matrix and also this is also now this is also same that we have done that in commutative law so if this is true, that their sum is a null matrix, then B is called additive 
inverse of a that means if two matrices are given a plus a and b and if we add them and we get null matrix then we can just say that the <clears throat> matrix b is the additive inverse of a or in this case in the next case a will be the additive inverse of b that means you can write and vice versa okay so for next example the example that we have taken that a is 1 2 3 4 okay and b we have taken it is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 okay now if we add this one or if we add this one also you, we will get this one why you can see here that if we add here a plus b that means 1 plus of minus 1 2 plus of minus 2 3 plus of minus 3 4 plus of minus 4 all will get zero also if i take b plus a so minus 1 plus 1 minus 2 plus 2 minus 3 plus 3 minus 4 plus 4 so in both the cases we are getting null matrix of order 2 into 2 okay so here we will say that b will be the b is the additive inverse of a or vice versa you can say okay so i think you are understood now the next property is the left cancellation law okay so what it is saying if a matrix suppose a plus b now if i take two matrices a and b and then if we add then another we take another and matrix suppose c and then we add with a this one and this if these two are equal suppose a plus b is equal to a plus c then we can cancel this a from left hand side you can see here also a is present in the left hand side and here also left hand side so if we cancel this a so we can write b equal to c so this is the left cancellation law that is we are cancelling this a from the left hand side okay and we can write b equal to c in the next property it is just the opposite you can say that right cancellation law right cancellation law okay why because here if we take matrix like this one b plus a equal to c plus a okay if these two are equal suppose the mat the addition of two matrices b and a is equal to the two matrices c and a that is b plus a equal to c plus a now here a is present in the right hand side here also right hand side so from this we can cancel this a from the right hand side and then we can write b equal to c okay so here that side is written right cancellation law as we are cancelling this a from the right hand side okay so for this reason it is right cancellation law and left cancellation law okay so that's all for today i think you have understood these were the properties of matrix addition and we have just go gone through the uh, addition of matrices as well and the remaining types of matrices that were left so in the next class we will start with the multiplication of matrices okay so until then please stay safe and take care of yourselves and keep studying hard thank you so much for watching